hi everyone now we are going to discuss about carbon cycle which is one of the type of biogeochemical cycles the carbon is going to be considered as a most important element in the biological system and it is going to be constituted about 50% of all living organisms the carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere or in the dissolved water is going to be considered as the ultimate source of uh, any organic compounds in the nature. The carbon cycle as a biogeochemical cycle by which the carbon is going to be exchanged among the different spheres of uh, environment like biosphere, pedosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere and the atmosphere of the earth. This carbon cycle was initially discovered by Joseph Priestley and Anthony Laviosher and it was mostly popularized by Humphrey Davy. Along with the nitrogen cycle and the water cycle, this carbon cycle comprises a sequence of events that are key to making the earth capable of sustaining the life. That means it describes the movement of carbon as it is recycled and reused throughout the biosphere. What is the importance of carbon cycle? The gaseous carbon dioxide is going to be amounts about 700 million tons in the atmosphere. And this carbon dioxide is important in the climatic changes, which is going to be exhibits warming effects and influences the solar radiation and the heat budgets. That means this is going to maintain the uh, temperatures of the atmosphere as well as it is also important in the global warming cause also. In total 700 billion tons, 115 tons of carbon is fixed in photosynthesis by land plants and the phytoplankton which are living in the water or in the oceans. As a result, Whatever the carbon becomes, that means carbon dioxide is turning into organic carbon, becomes a part of simple carbohydrates, then proteins, then lipids, and other complex organic compounds. So here, if you observe this figure, the carbon cycle diagram shows how the process by which the elemental carbon is exchanged between the biosphere and then pedosphere, then geosphere, then hydrosphere and the atmosphere of earth. And this is the carbon cycle is the most important process on the planet earth because it allows the earth to recycle and reuse its abundant element that is nothing but the carbon. The annual movement of carbon, the carbon exchange between the reservoirs and occur uh, because of uh, various chemical, physical and geological and biological process that occur in the soil. Now what are the sources of this atmospheric carbon dioxide? That means how that carbon dioxide is going to present in the atmosphere in a constant or in some sort of fluctuations of uh, concentration. The source of atmospheric carbon dioxide is going to be chiefly from so you can see here the respiration of the plants so that means the plants even while they are respiring they will release the carbon dioxide that is the one then decay and whatever the fermentation of organic matter then volcano eruption is also another activity then solution of uh, sedimentary rock and springs and burning of uh, coal oil gas and the plants etc so these are all the different sources by which the atmospheric carbon dioxide is going to be present. Then what are the steps that are involved in this carbon cycle? The cycle of carbon in nature comprises of uh, two main processes. The first one is conversion of oxidized form of carbon into the reduced organic form that means CO2 into the carbohydrates or other form. Then restoration of the original oxidized form through the mineralization of the organic form by the microorganism that means getting back the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So these are the two steps that we are going to discuss in detail now. So let's see the first one that is conversion of oxidized form of carbon dioxide into the reduced organic form. So here if you see the carbon dioxide is reduced into organic compounds mainly by the process called as photosynthesis. So this photosynthesis may occur by the photosynthetic algae or the phytoplankton or by the higher 
plants. Now here, the photosynthetic algae and higher plants are the most important agents of uh, carbon dioxide fixation. Coming to the ocean part, that means in the ocean, the major plant forms of fixed carbon are the free-floating microscopic algae called as phytoplankton. And they are going to be estimated to fix annually about 1.2 into 10 to the power of 10 tons of carbon. That means nearly 1.6 into 10 to the power of 10 tons of carbon is said to be fixed annually by photosynthetic terrestrial plant life. Besides this, autotrophic and heterotrophic bacteria are also capable of synthesizing the organic matter from inorganic carbon. In addition to the occurrence of photosynthesis among microorganisms, the latter also represents the example of carbon dioxide fixation into the what we call as following ways. Number one, if we consider the carbon dioxide represents the sole source of carbon for autotrophic bacteria. This, uh, the latter fixed the carbon dioxide to carbohydrates by a reduction reaction. So here you can see that carbon dioxide in the presence of hydrogen is giving rise to carbohydrates and the release of water. When coming to the heterotrophic bacteria, it fixes the carbon dioxide commonly and giving rise to the pyruvic acid and combining with the carbon dioxide gives rise to the oxaloacetic acid that is OAA. So this is a fast step where the conversion of oxidized form of carbon that is carbon dioxide into the reduced organic form called as a, uh, whatever the carbohydrate forms are going to be the organic form. Then moving to the second so here you can see uh, what is happening so through the photosynthesis by the algae in the oceans and on the tertial plants and the uh, algae that was present on the some of the water bodies on the tertial life also it is going to fix the carbon dioxide in the form of organic form not only that the carbon also enters into the soil by different organic matter that is coming from the animal waste human waste and even the plant litter all the things so they all will settle down into the soil and they convert into the fossil carbon. Now this fossil carbon is going to be taken up in the form of ores and all the things and burning of this fossil fuels is going to get back the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So we have seen only the conversion of this carbon dioxide into the organic form now. So now moving to the second step that is the restoration of this carbon dioxide through the mineralization of the organic form. So one can consider three different modes through which the organic matter is mineralized and the carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere. They are number one, process of respiration. So through the process of respiration, all the living organisms are going to release the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Second thing, the accidental forest fire and the intentional fuel burn. So accidentally, if you are having any forest fire also, lots of carbon dioxide is being released and intentional uh, fossil burning also releases the carbon dioxide back. Next, the decomposition of the organic matter by the microorganisms. So these are the three steps by the which the organic form of carbon is uh, getting back into the oxidized form that is carbon dioxide. The process of uh, respiration in plants and animals and the accidental and intentional burning of plants and their parts results in the breakdown of organic compounds releasing this whatever uh, uh, carbon compounds releasing the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Then moving to the steps that were involved in the decomposition of organic matter by microorganisms if you see here the organic compounds that eventually are deposited in the soil are degraded by the activities of microorganisms which are mainly bacteria and the fungi. The carbon dioxide released into the air as well as into the soil also. So let's see what are the steps that how a organic compound is going to be degraded into CO2. So if you see here the first step the cellulose decomposition. So here in the cellulose decomposition we are going to have this we know that the cellulose is going to be the abundant organic material in plants and it is readily attacked by many species of fungi and bacteria. For example, if you take the fungi, Fusarium, Aspergillus, Trichoderma, Penserium, etc. are there. And if we consider the bacteria which are involved in cellulose decomposition like uh, 
what we call as clostridium cellulomonas streptomonas then bacillus even we had a first nocardia micromonospora and polyganium uh, cellulofasciola etc so like this we can have a list of bacteria which bring about this uh, cellulose decomposition in the soil okay so if you see this reactions the cellulose is the most abundant organic material and this was broke down into cellulobios by an enzyme called as cellulase now this cellulobios is going to be again converted or break down into the glucose molecule by an enzyme called as beta glucosidase now this glucose by having an enzyme system of many microbes they are being converted into the carbon dioxide water and other end products so here the other end products or the by products of this microbial uh, what we call as consumption or mainly uh, whatever i told you carbon dioxide water and variety of other compounds collectively we are going to call it as a humus h u m u s so that's how we are going to have the cellulose decomposition by both the bacteria and the fungi okay in the soil then coming to the second type of uh, decomposition that is a uh, hemicellulose decomposition so when you are going to consider this hemicellulose or the polymers of simple sugars such as pentose hexose and uh, uronic acids and the decomposition of this hemicellulose by microorganism takes place through an agency of uh, extracellular enzymes called as hemicellulase and the fungi which are going to be involved in the degrading of this hemicellulose in soil are number 1 we can have the uh, aspergillus then penicillium fusarium trichoderma humicola and even chitomium are going to be considered as a best uh, hemicellulose decomposers then coming to the bacteria we are having bacillus pseudomonas cytophaga vibria ervinia streptomyces actinomyces etc are going to be involved in the degradation of this hemilose that is hemicellulose in the soil then moving to the third type that is lignin decomposition so here the lignin is the third most abundant constituent of the plants and it is highly resistant to microbial degradation but certain fungi and bacteria are known to degrade the lignin at slow rates for example if we are going to take the fungi which are going to be involved in lignin decomposition are aspergillus penicillium fusarium lenzite claveria and polyporus then coming to the bacteria which are involved are going to be of streptomyces then nocardia flava bacterium and then xanthomonas pseudomonas micrococcus etc are able to degrade at but at slow rates when compared to the fungi so this is all the two steps that are involved in the carbon cycle the first one is going to be the conversion of the oxidized carbon dioxide into the reduced form and the second one is going to be the restoration of original oxidized form of carbon dioxide through mineralization of the organic form then moving to the role of microorganisms in the cycle that means mainly in the carbon cycle what they are doing so if you observe here the bacteria and the fungi are going to play a vital role as a primary producers decomposers and primary consumers in the cycle that means the process of uh, management of carbon cycle originate from the plants which are going to be considered as the primary producers and consumed by the herbivores and they are going to reach us the stabilization in the what finally carnivores so at each tropic level organic matter is consumed by the microorganisms here the carbon is going to be transferred from one organism to the other and carbon atoms are constantly shifted from one kind of the molecule to another and these substances are oxidized by decomposers and releases the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere so microorganisms in general whatever the bacteria and fungi in particular play a vital role as i told you the primary producers decomposers and uh, primary consumers in carbon cycle and carbon dioxide is going to be fixed by the primary producers including the microorganism which use light or chemically bound energy now chemoheterotrophic bacteria and fungi serve as the main decomposers of organic matter 
and mineral uh, that is making minerals again available for the use by the primary producers. Ciliates and the flagellates and important microbial primary consumers feed on the bacteria and fungi recycling the nutrients as a part of a microbial loop. So this is how the role of microorganisms is going to be involved in carbon cycle at the different trophic levels of the eco food chain or the ecosystem. Then what are the functions of microorganisms in the carbon cycle? The most important functions of uh, microorganisms during the carbon cycle process are number one, formation of uh, what we call as organic matter through photosynthesis and chemosynthesis. The second one, decomposition of organic matter and release of inorganic compounds like carbon dioxide, ammonium, methane, hydrogen, all those. Then the third one, nutrient-rich food source for other chemoheterotrophs. Then fourth one, modification of substrates and nutrients during different interactions. Fourth one, next fifth one, changing the amounts of materials in soluble and as well as gaseous form. And then sixth one, production of inhibitory compounds that decrease the microbial activity and uh, symbiotic interaction. So these are the few functions of the microorganisms involved in the carbon cycle. So this is all about the carbon cycle. I hope you understood well. Thank you.